welcome everybody this morning. Thanks visitors for coming to visit us. We have an exciting day of a dedication of a new little one. That's always fun. And, and um, we just want to welcome you to New Hope. Thanks for joining us. And we're expecting big things because our God is a big God and he's always has something, uh, he always has something for us. So we're looking forward to seeing what it is today. So um, his word to us is live from the inside out. My child, I want you to live in such confidence in your relationship with me that nothing moves you. I want you to walk so aware of my presence that you and I carry on a constant conversation. I want you to feel my nearness every moment of the day. I want to draw you into the depths of my heart day and night. This is the place I've called you to live from the inside out. I offer you the chance to know me, to really know my character and to believe in my generous nature. I want you to know me as savior, friend, and overcoming king. I offer you the chance to live in the way you've always dreamed, to be fully aware of the direction I'm leading you, to notice the gentle tug that excitingly and spontaneously pulls you towards your destiny. I want you to be so confident in my spirit within you that the realm of my kingdom is just as real or more real than the situations around you. I want you to live from the inside out. Luke 17, 20 and 21, Jesus responded, God's kingdom realm does not come simply by obeying principles or by waiting for signs. The kingdom is not discovered in one place or another. For God's kingdom realm is already expanding within some of you. All right, good morning. Sorry, there's a lot of stuff happening here at New Hope. So um, I'm Steve. Thank you all, especially for those who are visiting this morning and um, for those who are visiting online who couldn't make it this morning. Uh, but a couple of things I wanted to highlight on because the calendar comes pretty fast. Um, one of the things I wanted to, uh, to mention is that starting 
September 10th, so that's, um, well, that's a, like a month away, but you know, I'm just excited about it. We've got our growth groups coming back up, so that's going to be taking place every Sunday morning at 9.30. Uh, you can join, Daryl's going to be teaching that class, uh, going through and uh, just learning the basics. So whether you're new in your faith, um, or all of us need that reminder of the, the essential basics of, of Christianity, kind of 101, um, and to grow in our faith together. So that's a cool opportunity. And uh, this coming Saturday, I know that it's still July today, but tomorrow is August. This coming Saturday, we're going to be having our church service not on Sunday, but rather on Saturday. And that's going to be taking place at Blue Spruce Park. So, um... You know, let me know if you have any questions about that. We've got flyers available. But essentially, we're coming together um, at 11 o'clock, pavilion number one, seats plenty. Um, we're going to be getting the food ready. And around a quarter after 11, we're going to be starting our church service, which is just going to be a couple of uh, quick songs, a short devotional. Then we're going to dive in and eat. And then the rest of the day, just hang out as a church family. Uh, there's fishing, hiking, you know, cornhole, uh, you name it, they've got it available. So just uh, coming together as a church family, getting to know each other a little better, and uh, just having a little bit of fun together. And uh, it's, it's actually really easy to get to, so don't be too uh, intimidated. Um, I did put a little map on the back, but it's essentially when you enter the park, um, you just watch on the left and you can't miss it. It's a giant pavilion. Uh, everything's handicap accessible. It's all right there. Restrooms, playground, the pavilion, um, and the, the lake. Um, that's fully stocked. It's, it's all right there and, and easily accessible. So that's this coming Saturday. The church is going to be providing um, all kinds of sandwich you know, type material, um, you know, sliced meat and cheese, buns, um, pulled pork. We're going to have chicken fingers, chicken tenders available, um, fruit and vegetable trays. So the basics are covered. So what we're asking you to do is just bring a side and a dessert to share, something that you want to show off. And uh, and if you're, you're not like a, a real good cook or anything, like we usually rely on uh, Walmart, you know, or Sam's Club, they, they got good stuff too. It's all good. So just a quick reminder, with all that being said, and we got something really, really, really awesome today. Today is a Child Dedication Sunday, and it is just an honor and a privilege to be dedicating um, Eden Schreckengoss to the Lord, a miracle in and of herself. Uh, there we go. So... I can have the family come forward. We want to take time um, to do the dedication um, and to pray for you. And my favorite part is to hear from the Lord. And if I get the elders come forward as well, um, some of the prophetic destinies that God has for Eden and in her life. And she's growing so fast. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. I think Eden's going to be giving Ellie a run for her money here. Uh. <laughs> hey, thank you. Awesome. Well, it's good to have everybody with us this morning. And so to get started, I just want to explain a little bit about what child dedication is. Good morning. And why we do this here at New Hope. Um, and, and so, you know, we don't perform um, infant baptisms, just something that we don't do because we really don't see that in Scripture um, we believe that water baptism is something that you do after a person has uh, chosen to receive the salvation of the Lord. So uh, once uh, Eden reaches an age of understanding and where she can make that decision, um, we're excited to water baptize her because it's going to happen, right? You're so adorable this morning. I know. She knows she's cute. <laughs> but what we do find throughout the scriptures is child dedication. What child dedication is, is when parents choose to dedicate their children to the Lord and really acknowledge that their children come from him. They're a gift from God entrusted into our hands for a season. Um, two great examples of this are Hannah, when she dedicated Samuel to the Lord and everything that the Lord did through his life. And we also see when Mary and Joseph uh, dedicated Jesus in the temple in Luke chapter 2. And I love how Simeon and Anna uh, came and gave prophetic words over Jesus and over his life. And so child dedication has a twofold purpose. Uh, the first is on behalf of the parents, huge commitment, um, to, to raise uh, Eden in the Lord. Um, to, to set an example of, for her to follow throughout her life. 
And the second is, as I mentioned, to prophetically call out Eden's destiny and what the Lord has for her um, as she's dedicated to the Lord. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some scriptures, and I'm going to ask yourself, uh, you know, Donnie and Jen, um, and if you'll just answer after I go through each one, we will, if you will. And so Psalm 127 verse 3 indicates that children are a gift from God and that offspring are a reward for him. And we are so blessed um, for Eden so will you acknowledge that Eden is a gift from the Lord, that she's been entrusted into your care for this season of her life, but that her life ultimately belongs to him? In Deuteronomy eleven eighteen 18 through 21, a longer one, encourages us to fix the word of God on our hearts and on our minds, to tie them as symbols on our hands, to bind them on our foreheads, to teach them to our children. When, whether we are walking down the road, lying down, waking up, whatever we are doing, to write them on the door frames of our houses and on our gates so that our days and the days of your children may be richly blessed in the land that the Lord has given you. And so you teach the word of God to Eden and to train her up by it so that she, as well as yourselves, may be blessed. Yeah. Awesome. And Proverbs 22, 6, a very familiar verse, it tells us to train up the children in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they will not depart from it. So will you train her up to know, worship, and to love God with all of her heart, mind, soul, and strength? Yeah. Awesome. And will you pray for and with Eden to seek God's direction for her life regularly? Yeah. And lastly, will you invite Eden to accept the salvation provided by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus when she reaches an age where she can understand this? Yeah. Awesome. And of course, it doesn't just take parents to raise the children. It takes a whole village, right? And so the next um, commitment is on behalf of the family and the church family here um, to support Donnie and Jen as they raise up Eden and Ellie and Anna, of course, as well. So will you support them by regularly praying for them throughout the often difficult adventure of parenting? And will you be an example for their family in living out the grace, the love, and the truth of God's word? And will you offer godly advice in love to build up and to encourage your family? And finally, will you encourage Eden into her giftings and into her calling as uh, God has prepared those for her? All right. Well, at this time, we want to pray for their family and pray that the Lord might uh, reveal his will here for Eden. And so we can pray together. And if the Lord gives you a word, feel free to come on forward. And so we thank you so much, Jesus, for Jen, for Donnie, and for the children that you have brought into their family. We thank you for Anna. We thank you for Ellie. And we especially thank you for the blessing of Eden. And so, Lord, we pray that you would give them strength, the strength that they need, Lord, to endure the, the adventure of parenting as they raise their children up in this crazy world, Lord, to love and to know you. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would um, be their wisdom, that you would give them creative instructions. You purposefully created each one of these children so unique. You have a divine purpose for each one. And so I pray that in the uniqueness of each child, that you would give Jen and Donnie wisdom and how to train them up so that each child can reach their full potential in you, Jesus. And we thank you especially for the miracle of Eden. We thank you for her life. And I believe that, that one of the anointings that Eden has on her life even now is just a joy. An enduring, persevering joy. That even when everybody else is angry and irritable and miserable, that she just has this joy that just puts a smile on your face. That can break through anything that this world or the enemy tries to rise up. That she's just going to be a goofball. <laughs> but in such a godly way that she's able to break off any kind of oppression or depression that tries to rise up against your family. That she's going to be that light and that joy in your household. Father God, we just thank you for this wrecking gospel. Mm -hmm. Jen, Father God, and uh, sorry, Donnie. And Lord, we just... Uh, we, we, I, I pray a blessing over that household. Father yes. God, that where Eden would go, Father God, we know that your spirit's with her. And Father God, that as she grows and she gets older, Father God, 
that the joy that's within her people are going to inquire of that joy and she would give testimony father god that it is because of you that the love that her family that donnie and her sisters will show her father god will pass on to others and father god i also ask lord that uh, I, I pray a covering over the household and over the, the those in the household father god just as is, is, mm -hmm. is the passover father god is the, the blood was sprinkled over father god is the protection is there and Father God, I, I pray that over that household, that Father God, that uh, they know that the protection is from you and that they're under that protection. And Father God, that when the enemy tries to come in, it's the protection that's there and it's placed upon them, Eden, and all of them, Father God. We thank you for the joy that they bring to us here at the church. We thank you for the family. Father God, we just ask many, many blessings upon Donnie and Jen and Eden and their sisters. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much for this family and the blessings that you brought for these children. And Lord, I thank you especially for Eden today. We're dedic we're dedicating her. And the Lord has given me the impression um, that she has a Esther, uh, or Hadassah, I guess, <laughs> um, destiny, I guess, mm. uh, I had the, it, it kind of, it's such a time as this, you all w were waiting <laughs> for a long time for her, and, 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 and this is the time, this is the season, she's here for a time as this, um, God has good, good things for her, but it's timely, um, and I believe there'll be words, and, and, and just, uh, she'll have the wisdom from God that it's, it's perfect, perfect for this time, for this season, for that moment, whenever that is, as, as she grows up. And, and she's just exactly here for the right time, for this season, for you guys and for this family. Um, and, and it's just such a beautiful thing. It's, it's exciting. So, Lord, we thank you for Eden. We thank you for that destiny. And we know that, that you got a plan and you're going to fulfill that through her. And, Lord, we just thank you so much for for bringing her in this time and this season and, and blessing this family um, and completing it. And I love you, but <laughs> thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Well, when I was told that there was going to be baby dedications, the two babies that came to my mind was uh, Amarin and Eden, and um, he gave me both the, the both of them um, this dedicate this declaration declaration. And, um, and then I feel like um, to give this to you, I printed it out so that you guys can, on a regular basis, declare this over, over Eden. So, so um, I'm going to, if everybody agrees with me now, we'll do it. And then we'll be manifesting signs and wonders because, as you said, she is a miracle. She is, you know, she is a sign, already a sign and a wonder. <laughs> we declare that Eden is one who carries the miraculous upon her and that she will operate in the supernatural manifestations of God for this generation. We say that heavenly signs confirm the word that flows from her mouth. We decree that every hindrance and blockage that would prevent the supernatural breaks now in Jesus' name. We take authority over every man-made ideology and empty religious tradition that would keep the mighty works of God from being displayed. We say that you, Eden, come to know the supernatural attributes of God that enable you to speak with new tongues, cast out demons, and lay hands upon the sick. May you operate in the miraculous power of the Spirit without restraint whenever the need arises. We say signs, wonders, and miracles will follow you, Eden, in Jesus' name. Isaiah 8, 18. Behold, this is our decree now, behold, I and the children whom the Lord has given me are for signs and for wonders. And you guys can declare and decree this over her. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Be praying for Donnie. Poor guy's outnumbered. He's, he's <laughs> 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 awesome. All right. Well, we love your family. You guys are a huge blessing. Excited for what Eden's going to do. <laughs> hey. 11, who is now 12. Sorry. <laughs> awesome. Well, God bless you all.
Yeah. Uh, God has a unique and divine plan and purpose, not just for Eden and for the whole Shrek and Goss family, but for each one of us. And that destiny, it is hidden. Not hidden from you, but hidden for you. How exciting is that? It's like an Easter egg hunt. God has a destiny for your life that is hidden in him, in Christ alone. And so we're going to... Uh, Enter at this time into worship. There is freedom here in this house to worship the Lord however he leads. This morning he unexpectedly led me to, to lead worship here. So we're going uh, we're, we're to enter in together and believe great things from our great God. Amen. So feel free to stand if you would like. Sit and soak if you would like. This is a place of freedom this morning. But Lord, we do just thank you for all that you have accomplished. Jesus, you said it is finished on the cross, and we believe it. Lord, we're believing for great things from you, our great God. You have said that there is nothing too hard for you. Nothing is impossible for you, Lord. So this morning, we just turn to you. We shift our focus, Lord, from the things of this world, from the things that trip us up, Lord, and we're looking to you, our answer, our hope, our solution, Lord, everything that we need and so much more. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my light, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. And we can stand firm in Him, amen. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe. This gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, and bursting forth in glorious curse has lost its grip on me, for I am his and he is mine, but with the precious blood of Christ. Yes, he has removed all guilt, all sin, all shame from our lives. No in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus. 
Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand. Let's just make that declaration again. Make this proclamation over your life. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I stand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Yes, Lord, we'll stand firm on you, that firm rock, our firm foundation that cannot be moved. There is power in the name of Jesus. There's no one like him. No one like him. He was there in the beginning. He'll be there at the end. And he's right here with us and for us through it all. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down my sin was great your love was greater what could separate us now what a wonderful name it is what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus christ my king what a wonderful name it is nothing compares to this what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of jesus Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no weakness. name it is nothing can stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a 
powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. Yes, he's been given the name above that very name. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Yes. There's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing that we cannot do through. Take me as you find me, all my fears and failures, and feel my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. Savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. So shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. It's for your glory, Lord. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation, he rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave, he's our savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, he is mighty to save. Forever, author of salvation. Rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Yes, Lord. He's not just the author of our salvation, He is the perfecter and the finisher of it. The good work that He started in our lives, He will bring it to completion. 
All we have to do is surrender to him, to let him have his way in our lives. So this morning, Jesus, we just surrender all. We surrender all to you, Lord. We trust you with our lives, Lord, with all that we are. about the kingdom of God is that he does all of the hard work every other world religion you got to work so dang hard you got to live by these set of rules you've got to do this do that don't do this don't do that but in the kingdom of God there is freedom freedom God does all the hard work he paid it all on the cross he lived the life that we could never live perfect sinless he did it for us because we never could he gave it up on the cross he rose again to life and now he fills us he fills us with the spirit and it is the holy spirit the very presence of god that wants to do all that hard work to change and to transform us. As Sharon shared this morning, it is living life from the inside out. It is a transforming work of God, not of ourselves. All we have to do is surrender to Him. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and yeah, my shame is undone in your presence Lord. holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord your presence Lord There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware 
of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. need is more of the Lord in our lives. Whew. More of him. There's nothing, nothing that he can't do. It's nothing that he can't overcome. Whatever you're going through right now, it's not over yet, is it? The Lord has the final word so long as we live and surrender to him. And his final word is good. This will end in the goodness of the Lord. This will end in a manifestation of his presence, of his goodness, of his faithfulness. So at this time, we're going to uh, release the kiddos, ages 7 to 12, back to Children's Church. Pray that you're going to have a blessed time, an exciting time in the Lord. What? No? You're telling me no? My wifey's saying no, and we all know who the boss is, right? <laughs> No, she actually has something special for you. See her in the back here. You're right. I'm all kinds of off my game this morning, but it's all right because it ain't about us. It's about the Lord. Whew. So this morning, I know I've been talking a whole bunch, but this morning we're going to be diving into the message. Um, you know, it, it's, it's really... A message of encouragement as we press in and as we hang on. Um, this morning, if you want to turn ahead of me, we're going to be uh, looking at Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. Learning a little bit about these days that we are living in. These are the days. And so through Joel chapter 2, we kind of hear God's heart, his heart cry to us. Whatever it is that we're going through, wherever we find ourselves in life, God is crying out to us. He wants us to better understand the days that we're living in and what he wants to do in your life and through your life. He wants to do a good work. Um, he wants us to be like David who declared in the Psalms that uh, he made the proclamation that he will experience the goodness of God here in the land of the living. And we know he went through some stuff. Life was not always easy. Even when he had a prophetic destiny called out in his life, it didn't just automatically happen. It happened after a long season of training and persecution and, and hardships. But it still came to pass at exactly the right time in exactly the right way. And uh, David's a good example of not short-circuiting God's plans and trying to do it in our own way. But this chapter starts out by warning us this chapter starts off by warning us about a day that is coming called the day of the Lord, right? And how terrible it's going to be. Isn't that just an encouraging word of the Lord? But it's a reality. Um, as, as you're going to be taught, uh, <laughs> Daryl's good for these like gotcha things when he speaks heresy. And I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a second here, buddy. You know, like, like all ways lead to the Lord, right? And th then he explained it. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're right, you know. All paths lead to Jesus, right? It's just whether it leads to Jesus, your Savior, or Jesus, your judge. There is coming a day when everyone's going to stand before the Lord. Every one of us. Everybody raises back to eternal life. 
just whether you receive eternal life or the second death at that point. But the day the Lord is, is described here at the beginning of Joel chapter 2, and I'm not going to go through it. You can read through it, but it's, it's important for us to understand. The day of the Lord is the final day when time's up and God pours out his wrath on all mankind. You, you can read from Revelation that there's only one, one in all of creation who is found worthy to crack open those seals and to start pouring out uh, that wrath on the day of the Lord. It's a day when time's up and the current order of things are destroyed right before God makes all things new. It's a terrible, it's a horrific time that spares nothing in all of creation. In fact, it says that even the stars are going to be destroyed. That day is coming. That day is coming. However, that day is not now. And I'm so thankful that that day is not now. I'm so thankful that God is patient and gracious and merciful giving us chance after chance, opportunity after opportunity before that day comes. Because right now we're living in those days of God's grace and mercy and goodness and patience. We're living in the days where God's salvation, it's still ours for the receiving. It's still being freely offered to everyone. In fact, Peter reminds us that it's for our own sake and because of God's patience that that day has not yet come, the day of the Lord. He wants no one. He wants no one to suffer his wrath. He desires for everyone to receive his salvation. But love that is forced is not love at all. And God is love. And he loves us. He doesn't force us to uh, choose him and to choose his will. Trust me, I've asked him to. He won't do it. He won't take control of you and force you to do his will. He gives us free choice, free will to choose him. And that's why there's blessings for obedience. Because you got a choice. We can choose. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 through 14, and I'm getting to Joel chapter 2, so hang in there. Teaches us this. For, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. St. Peter writes, and he reminds us, don't forget this one thing. With the Lord, the day is like a, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. I mean. He exists outside of time and space. He's eternal. So to him, a day is nothing. A thousand years is nothing. And he reminds us in verse 9 that the Lord's not slow in keeping his promises. Some of us understand slowness. Rather, he is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but wanting everyone to come to repentance. Okay, so that's the heart of God. That's the will of God. That's why Jesus took on the cross and why it's empty now. He wants everyone to repent and to receive his salvation. But not everyone will. And verse 10 again reminds us, But the day of the Lord will come, and it will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. The earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way. What kind of people ought you be? You ought to live holy, godly lives. And holy just means set apart for God, right? The, the only thing that made this spoon different from this spoon in the Old Testament temple was this one is dedicated for God's purposes. And we also are a holy people. We've been set apart for a purpose, a divine plan and purpose. And he said in verse 12, as you look forward to the day of God and even speed its coming, that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire. The elements will melt in the heat. But, you know what we say about buts here, right? Buts are big in the Bible. But, so you got the day of the Lord coming, this horrible, terrible, horrific day. But, but keeping, keeping with his promise. We're looking forward to it because we're looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. We are looking forward to the day when he wipes every tear dry, where there's no more sickness, no more death, no more mourning. And that's available to everyone, everyone who will receive it. Why are we so hard-headed and stubborn sometimes, right? So verse 14, St. Peter ends in this. He says, so then, dear friends, since you're looking forward to this, Make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and living at peace with him. Living at peace with him. 
and I got to go into a few others as well. After explaining all of these in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus says, here's all the things that are coming. These are the signs that the end is coming. The, the day the Lord is on its way. And, and he ends and he concludes with the same simple. I love the gospel is so simple. The kingdom of God is so simple. We make it so complicated. Jesus ended it this way in Matthew 24, verse 42 to 44. He said, therefore, keep watch because you don't know. On what day your Lord will come? As Peter just said, um, you know, it's going to come like a thief in the night. In fact, where did he get that from? Got that from Jesus in verse 43 here. He continues on. Jesus said, but understand this. If the owner of the house had known what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch. And he wouldn't have left his house to get broken into, right? All, all of us redneck Western Pennsylvanians, right? You know someone's coming at your house. They're going to be meeting, you know, face to face with a shotgun more than likely, right? You're not going to let it happen. Not in this town, right? It ain't happening here. Jesus said, you know, if you knew what time the thief was coming, you would have kept watch. You wouldn't have let your house get broken into. And he said in the same way in verse 44, so also you must be ready. Because the Son of Man, capital S, capital M, he's speaking of himself. He will come at an hour when you do not expect him. So be ready. That's what Jesus said in verse 44. So be ready. Everything you need to know about the end times is found right there in the simple words of Jesus. Just be ready. You don't know when it's coming. You know, only the Father knows. Not even the angels know when that day is coming. So just live at peace with God and ready for it. Because none of us are promised tomorrow. Most all of us sitting here this morning understand that reality. But none of us are promised tomorrow. We've all experienced the unexpected loss of loved ones that painfully remind us of that. None of us are promised. We have no idea when that day is coming for us. That's why after Paul, he teaches us all about death and about what it's going to be like, about what the resurrection is going to be like. He ends with the same conclusion. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, he said, Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm and let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know your labor will not be in vain. Just live your life for Jesus. Live your life always ready for him. You can't go wrong that way, right? Your life's going to be blessed, and you are going to be a blessing to all those around you. And so with all of that, all this warning about the coming of the day of the Lord and the way that we ought to live, we now turn to Joel chapter 2, starting in verse 12. So we got past all the, the, the dark, scary stuff of the day of the Lord, and we don't have to be afraid of it. This stuff is temporary. It's here today, gone tomorrow. And God's going to put an end to it one day. So we don't live for the things of this world. We live for his kingdom that, that exists eternally. And so in Joel chapter 2, after he warns us about all that scary stuff, he says, even now, and this is the Lord speaking. You read that, declares the Lord, even now, return to me. Return to me in this area of life, in that area of life. And you can do whatever you want there. That's all good, right? Now, how is the Lord calling us to return to him? With our whole heart, wholeheartedly. You can't half butt the kingdom of God. <laughs> I don't read from the King James, so I, I can't say that word from the pulpit. But, you know, you just can't. It's all or nothing. It's cold or hot. What did Jesus say? I, I wish you were one or the other. Why do you got to be so lukewarm? Why do you got to be lukewarm? It's all or nothing. It's wholeheartedly or not at all. Kingdom of God is an extreme kingdom. He says, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, with mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. This is another reminder. This is sort of a cool poetic way that God said, doesn't matter what you look like, right? Not your garments. It's not what you look like on the outside. That's religion. God wants you to change from the inside, your heart. God wants your heart, not your appearances. He doesn't want you putting on that Christian mask and face and costume. He wants you to be transformed from the inside out. Rend your heart, not your garments. That's what the Lord looks at. And in the end, that's what he judges. He judges hearts, our attitude, our motives. We learned all about that last week, so I won't go into that again. That's what God judges. If the, because what's the deal? I mean, if those are right, if our hearts are right, and our attitudes and our motives, then the outside's right too. It's so much easier. Then you just get to authentically be yourself. That's why there's freedom where the Spirit of the Lord is inside of us, right? There's freedom because you just get to be you. 
You don't have to worry about who you are around this person or who you are about this person or what did I say to this person and what did, you know, and you got to keep all your lies. Straight. You don't have to worry about any of those things. When, when you rend your heart to the Lord and you just be who you were created to be, there is freedom, freedom in that. My spouse can look at my phone anytime and not worry because I'm not trying to hide anything. I am who I am, who I am, who I am. Whether it's standing up here or anywhere else, and the same should be for every follower of Jesus. They just are who they are. There's freedom, freedom through Christ. And that's why I love how bluntly Jesus explains this, this truth to us. It's not about religiously doing things a certain way because he was getting blasted by that. You know, the religious, the Pharisees were like, well, why do you, you and your disciples not do this, that, and the other thing? And Jesus asked him, are you still so dull? <laughs> I love Jesus. He's awesome. Don't you see? Whatever goes in the mouth goes into the stomach. And then, Jesus is PG here. And then it goes out the body. Okay? <laughs> These are the words of Jesus, not me. So, you know, don't get mad. Jesus said this. Don't you understand? Whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach, then out the body again. But the things that come out of a person's mouth, oh, those things come from the heart. That is what defiles a person. Because whatever comes out of the heart, they could be evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. All those things defile a person and they come from the heart. But eating with one unwashed hands, that doesn't defile them. And so again, is God calling us to clean up our lives and to live right so that we can be accepted by him and to come to him? No, not by any means. God is calling us to come to him as we are so that he can clean us up. You know, what can wash us white as snow? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, right? I can't do anything to wash myself, to cleanse my sin. I can't. God is calling us to return to him just as we are so that he can do the work of cleansing us and purifying us and transforming us into the person he created us to be. That's why we're a new creation in him. The old is gone, the new is here. Because we can't do it on our own. And so again, Jesus, God's calling us here in Joel chapter 2, continuing on verse 13, to return to him because he's gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger and he's abounding in love. He relents from sending calamity. And who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing. Grain offerings, drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people together. Consecrate the whole assembly. Bring together the elders. Gather up the children. Even those who are nursing at the breast, come together. Let the bridegroom leave his room. Let the bride leave her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord instead weep between the portico and the altar. For those of you who knew your Old Testament history, you know what happened when they were uh, weeping in that place. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Don't make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? You see, something powerful happens when God's people come together Leave their lives behind, leave their opinions behind, leave their will and their, even their emotions behind. And they just come together to seek after God. Something powerful happens. God hears and answers. He, he, he cleanses us of all the stuff that we're doing wrong. He purifies us and he does a miracle on our behalf. That, that, that's what fasting does, right? It abandons self. Whatever it is that you're fasting, it's just, it's just, you know, leaving that behind, whether it be food or social media or whatever, surrendering yourself. That's what the Lord's looking for, surrender. Laying down yourself and seeking after him. And we see over and over and over again throughout the Old and New Testaments, the Old and New Covenants, what God does when his people come together. He acts on their behalf. When we seek after him, we find him. When we choose to turn to him, he turns to us. When we cry out to him for salvation, he saves us. When we cry out to him for deliverance, he sets us free. God is a restorer. He is a rewarder of those who diligently and earnestly seek after him. Again, these are just all scriptures. I'm just not throwing them up here to quote them. It's what he has promised to do. And this is God's response here as we find in verse 18 of Joel. 
whenever God's people came together and left whatever they were doing with their busy lives and they just chose to seek after him, God's response was this. It says in verse 18, Then the Lord was jealous for his land. Then he took pity on his people. And the Lord replied to them, I'm sending you new grain, new wine, olive oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. I'll drive out the northern horde from you, pushing it into the parched and barren land. Its eastern ranks will drown over in the Dead Sea. Of course, you have to, this isn't written to the United States of America, so you've got to look at ancient Israel and where they're located, driving out all of the enemies from every side. Its western ranks into the Mediterranean Sea. We'll call it the Pacific, the Dead Sea, the, the Atlantic. Its stench will go up, its smell will rise, because surely the Lord has done great things. Has God done some great things for you? Has he done some great things for us, right? He's washed away all of our sin. He took it on himself. He became a curse so that we could be blessed. He died so that we can live. I mean, how great is our God? There's nothing that he did not do for us. There's nothing that he held back from us. He will still pour out his kingdom to us if we just turn to him. In fact, he says he wants to take away all of our fear in verse 21. He says, don't be afraid. Be glad. Rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Don't be afraid. Even the wild animals. For the pastures in the wilderness, they're going to become green. The trees again will bear their fruit. The fig tree, the wine will yield their riches. Be glad. Rejoice in the Lord your God. He has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains, as he did before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and new oil. And you see this continued theme. He's going to be giving us new grain, right? New grain, the grain, the bread of life, Jesus himself. This was Old Covenant prophetic of what was coming. He promised us grain, Jesus, the bread of life, the living word on which we feast. He's promising to give us wine, and wine is representative of the Holy Spirit, the very presence of God within us. And of course, there's the, the, uh, the oil, the, the olive oil. We still use olive oil here for, uh, for anointing, the anointing of the Lord. God's anointing empowers us, equips us, enables us to do what we could never do on our own. That's what God's anointing does. What we could never do on our own, God's Holy Spirit empowers us to do it through his anointing. And then God promises to repay, to repay in verse 25, because our God is a restorer, right? He said, I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten. The great locust, the young locust, the other locust, and the locust swarms. Whatever it is that's been stealing, killing, and destroying from your life, God is going to restore. He is going to repay. He said, you will have plenty to eat until you're full. You will praise the name of the Lord your God who has worked wonders for you. Never again will you need to be ashamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That there is no other God. Never again will my people be put to shame. And the awesome thing is this is a prophetic word and it's come to pass. It's come to pass through Jesus. It's all taken place. God's restoration is available to us through his free gift of salvation. And that's just the beginning. Then all this is also going to take place in verse 27. Afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old, this is Old Testament, and that was just so countercultural. You know, women don't prophesy. Well, yeah, they, they did in the kingdom of God. They did in the temple. I just talked about Anna who prophesied over Jesus. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your younger men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Guess what? The, these are the days. <laughs> the promise has happened. It's been fulfilled. Y'all have read about Pentecost, right? In Acts chapter 2. It happened. He poured out his spirits. These are they. We are them. We're the people, the, the servants of God, both men and women, who he's poured out his spirit on. We can prophesy. We can dream dreams. And I believe the Lord is calling his body to dream again. Right? To dream again, to dream big. Um, he goes on in verse 30 to say, I will show you wonders in the heavens and on the earth. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. 
The sun will be turned to darkness, the, the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So you see this mix of prophecy, you know. I, I remember being taught before that, that prophecy is sort of like a mountain range. Like it looks like it's all one mountain as you're giving this prophetic word, but it's all happening at different times and places. And that's what happened. Some of this has happened, some of it hasn't. The day of the Lord hasn't come yet. Uh, the, the sun hasn't been turned to darkness yet, right? It's still burning up there last time I checked. Yeah, it's still enough gas to go, right? The elements haven't been destroyed by fire yet. Nah. But the day of the Lord is coming. But in verse 32, he reminds us that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And this is Old Covenant, Old Testament, a prophecy of Joel chapter 2. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance. As the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls, they will be saved. And so I love that this is the day. These are the days that we're living in. We're living in the days of God's salvation. He is graciously and patiently waiting for all of us to return to him with all of our hearts. Not, not looking right and talking right and acting right, but returning with all of our hearts. Surrendering all that we are to him so that he can fill us to overflowing with his spirit and do a work in us and through us. Today is a day of salvation. Today is a day that we can all receive the outpouring of his spirit. We will prophesy. We will dream dreams. We will see visions. There is deliverance. There is restoration. There is hope. The whole kingdom is available to us. There are signs, wonders, and miracles that are still taking place today. Many of us have seen them firsthand and experienced them. So today, why not call on Jesus? Because everyone who calls on him will be saved. He doesn't turn you away and be like, no, 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 you take care of this, this, and this first, and, and then come back and we'll talk. No, he accepts us just as we are. How great is our God? Why not leave that old self behind and let Jesus deliver and heal and transform us into that new creation? Why not receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit and the anointing of the Lord so that we can be equipped and empowered? No longer victims in life, but victors in life. Right? Because we can overcome whatever it is that comes our way. And that's what God's will and his desire is that we do. He is patiently waiting on one thing from all of us. And that's just to receive it. Just to receive his salvation and everything that it comes with. I mean, we've just tasted it. It's not, not just a get out of the hell card, you know. There's so much more to God's salvation. And eternal life doesn't start the moment that he calls you home or you kick the bucket, right? Eternal life begins the moment that you surrender your life to Jesus. That's when your true life begins. Life and life abundant. Born again. So right now he's offering us up his entire kingdom. Why not turn to the Lord? Why not turn to him? He's offering us up a kingdom of true abundant life. Life here on the earth, even as David declared, I will experience the goodness of the Lord here in the land of the living. He's calling us to follow him from a victory into a victory. And he never promised that life's going to be easy. You're still going to go through some hard things in life, but you won't go through them alone. You will go through them with him. And he is able to bring beauty from ashes, life from death. There's nothing he cannot do. He can manifest his goodness into every, any, any in every situation. So let's just take him up on his offer, right? I mean, he's offered it up. Why not just receive it? It's really that simple to receive a full and abundant life. Just to seek after him and let him make everything new, starting with us. And so we're just going to end with prayer here. And so, Jesus, this morning I just ask you to forgive me. Forgive me for resisting you. I sense your call in my life. Forgive me for trying so hard to do the right things and to live the right way. Right now, I just surrender it all to you. Jesus, I receive your salvation. Forgive me of all my sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, do a work in my life that you know I've been trying so hard to do on my own. I pray you would do that work. Create in me a clean and pure heart. Create in me a willing, sustaining spirit to follow you even when life gets tough. Jesus, we are going to take you at your promise. Your promise to restore all that the thief has given us and to give us a life of abundance. 
We thank you for that new life that begins here and now. We will follow you all the days of our lives. We will trust in you and in what your word says. We will trust your promise every step of the way. And we thank you for the work you're going to do in and through us. So that everybody who sees it would know that wasn't them. That was you, Lord. Let others see the work that you're doing in my life and want you to do the same in theirs. We thank you for all of this and so much more in your name. Amen. Amen. Be blessed and have some fun out there in the kingdom of God. It's pretty awesome to be a part of, isn't it? He's got good stuff for you. And definitely be continuing to pray for the Shrekengas and Eden and their whole family. The incredible blessing that they are. But man, God's just getting started in your family. Good stuff awaiting. Amen. Amen. Be blessed.